Yo, yo. Yo, yo. Yo, yo. Let me move this mic up. Ah, Mookie! What's up, bro? And we back, y'all. Oh, we really? With another reaction video, man. We got this documentary up. Right. Y'all be wanting us to react to many movies on here, shorty. But you know us, we gonna put that work in. <laughs> Wake up, Mookie. I'm up, you woke me up. How you feeling this Monday morning, bro? Feeling good, bro, feeling good. Everything good with Everything you? Everything cool. You ready to react to Muhammad Ali? Yeah. Now, I ain't gonna lie, of course I heard of your boy Muhammad. I ain't gonna lie to you. I never watched no Dot Mary on him. You I watched him. None of his fights, I always heard about, like, him and Joe Frazier. <laughs> I always heard. I'm gonna have a robbery with a few dudes. Well, I about to say, of course I watched the movie, yeah. but I never watched like an actual detailed documentary. Uh -huh. And you know your boy Joseph Vincent, shout out to him, uh -huh. he always do it right when it come down to these. Okay. So if y'all new to the channel, y'all, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, man. Right, right. Let's react to this legend, man. Oh. Let's get it. Look like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Your hands can't hit. This is Your the legend of see. Cassius Clay. The most beautiful I always thought that was one of the slickest names. Cassius Clay. What? That's a slick name, y'all. I ain't gonna lie. Cassius Clay? That's his slave name. That's why I changed it to Muhammad Ali. But I still thought his name. Hold on. A slave gave that to him, though? No, that's his slave name. Like, like when he migrated to Africa, I mean, when uh, his uh, ancestors migrated to America through yeah. slavery. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing one of the plantation owners last name was Clay. Oh, wow. So all the slaves took on their last name. You know, we don't know what our last names truly are. For real. Yeah. Wow. Okay. History Mookie in the building, y'all. Beautiful fighter in the world today. What should people tell their kids who Muhammad Ali was? Clay is lightning fast. He was a tremendous bolt of lightning. Oh. Oh, Muhammad Ali struck us in the middle of America's darkest night, in the heart of its most threatening gathering storm. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Cassius Marcellus Clay. Oh, he's sells. young, he's handsome. They know it. They know it. <laughs> and many people believe he'll be the next heavyweight champion of the world. He was leaning back yeah. and away <laughs> from punches. Cassius Clay, gotta remember, is the greatest oh, fighter that good. ever lived in and out of the ring. Will unquestionably be the toughest fighter that Clay has been in with so far. Created by Mother Nature out of thin air, a fantastic combination of power and beauty. And he combined that velocity with the power of a heavyweight. More oh, into the canvas goodness. again by a barrage of punches. He did things nobody would do. He predicted the round that he would knock somebody out in, and then he would do it. Clay wins by a fourth round knockout, as predicted. He was the first available superstar. He was funny. He was beautiful. He was the most perfect athlete you ever saw. And those ever, are his bro. own words. You saw the publicity it brought. And what did the... Are you interested in starting your own faceless YouTube automation channel? But all people do is tell you to go to Fiverr and... The publicity equal a larger and larger presence on the American stage. Son and listen, I watched him here in the gym a few months ago when he was here to fight Howard King. And he can hit a guy in the elbows and just about break his arm. Liston was a virtually invincible, just a dreadnought of a, a fighter. Liston was a great fighter. I seen him knock out a guy's teeth one night. It's the Ooh. truth. No baloney. Hit him. Sonny Liston, right? Sonny Liston, yeah. Sonny so Liston hard. used to be a... He dislodged... Kind of like a, a leg breaker for the Mafia. Oh, for real? Yeah, he was like a leg breaker for the Mafia back in the day. The Mafia and the teeth went with the Mafia. And he had this very forbidding and intimidating, <laughs> utterly hostile manner about him. He was so powerful. I was a god. When he jabbed you, it was the same as punching somebody. You know? I had no dreaming idea that he could win that fight. I didn't give him a chance in hell. I'm young. I'm he said what? They didn't give him a chance in hell to win that fight. <laughs> against Muhammad? No, 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 no. Muhammad, they, they give Muhammad a chance in hell to win against Sonny Liston. Oh, Sonny Liston was demolishing dudes, bro. 
handsome, you guys I'm watch fast, some of these spots I'm too. pretty, and can't possibly be beat. He was a 22-year-old by the name of Cassius Clay. Listed almost the first time he hits him. Could be one, perhaps two. I'll take one. I look for Liston to win in three rounds. I like Liston in about one to three rounds. So everybody was batting on him. Was perfect yeah. for television. He was the provocateur, which is what TV wanted. As we got near to the fight, a new fella showed up. Malcolm X. Ali's yes, interface with the counterculture and the beginnings of his huge socio-political presence. If he were made to realize how black people really feel and how fed up we are without that old compromise and sweet talk. As if he hadn't put enough pressure on himself, Cassius Clay decided to announce that morning he had joined the black Muslim religion in a popular militant group. Ticket sales started dropping to Muslims to Muslims. They were thinking of possibly canceling the fight. That, that was a polarizing moment that Cassius Marcellus Clay was going to be Muhammad Ali, and we'd never seen anything like that. You know how great I am. I don't have to tell you about my strategy. I tell let my trainer tell you, Bodini, come here. Bodini, tell him, what are we going to do? You're going to float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Ah, ah. rumble, young man, rumble. Ah. This will be the biggest contest in the By the time the Liston weigh-in took place, it was in agreement with the boxing people that we should get serious. It's the morning of February 25th, the day of the big fight. Now we'll see the craziest way in in all boxing history. You don't want to make Sonny mad. Sonny's bad enough for me. <laughs> he was a showman, yo. That's why I like, like, a lot of people think Floyd the greatest. Floyd wasn't a showman like this guy. Nah, Floyd, Floyd don't, Floyd don't do as much. Floyd don't do as much as him would it seem like. No, no, he Muhammad giving me, you know what he giving me? Outside the ring too. Floyd just, just about money, bro. Bro, like, he giving me Adrian and Brona, Makana. Give me those type of vibes. Floyd not. Floyd is a talker and all that. He's slick too. Don't yeah. get you. But he more so like a little bit arrogant with it. He like. He, he like. arrogant with it. Who? Muhammad Ali. No, that's what I'm saying. Muhammad Ali is arrogant with it. He talk good. I mean, Muhammad Ali kind of birthed Floyd as far as like like attitude and things like that. Like, all right. You know, Muhammad Ali was a, was a vibe inside the ring and he was a vibe outside the ring. He was just exciting to watch with his street clothes on and his suits and all so, that. So, so, so overall, he Deion Sanders. I mean, hey, Deion did nah, win. Nah, did, nah, my, huh? Deion did win the other day, what? didn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not bad. And I agreed to that all the way up, and then he hit the door. Clay said uh, anybody would have to be afraid of a crazy man. It was all part of young Clay's master plan. Clay was smart, and he was clever, and he had, he could get on the list and skin more so than anybody ever. I saw Sonny Liston a few days ago, Cash. Ain't he ugly? <laughs> <laughs> he he's too ugly to be the world champ. The world champ should be pretty like me. Well, he told me to bet my life that you wouldn't go three rounds. Well, if you want to lose your money, then bet on Sonny. <laughs> be somebody who was whistling past the graveyard, somebody who had to be scared, who was trying to you know, keep his courage up before he was destroyed. I felt that Sonny Liston was going in and squash this uh, boastful, braggardly kid like an ant. All set now. World heavyweight boxing title uh, on the line. Just the anticipation of my father thinking that Ali was going to get killed literally by Sonny Liston because that is what people thought. The real drama around this fight was whether this hysterical man child was yeah, going to lose his nerve, whether he was going to show up, and whether he was going to get killed. Very slippery. Greatest of all time, greatest athlete, ambassador, human being of all. Look like Sonny Lesson don't throw nothing but power punches. Yeah, that's all. He was a he was a pressure fighter. That's that's pressure, bad. Pressure, 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 pressure. That's no, bad. When you got like a defensive fighter, like. No, nah, I said that's bad for him when you got somebody that's really going to weave that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because it's like taking your energy away. Yeah. All time. The challenger is jabbing out. Float hey, like a bee. Butterfly, sting like a bee. Look at the guy yawning. Tell us what you think at the end of one. You look at the videos, or there's documentaries, there's movies, and it's hard to sum him up because you could do documentaries on different parts of his life. Mm. Mm. Left eye. Uh, 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 uh. So I get him down, 
I get the sponge and I pour the water into his eyes, trying to cleanse whatever's there. Before I did that, put my pinky in his eye and I put it into my eye. He burned like hell. There was something caustic in both eyes. Joe Polino had used Monsell solution on that cut. And my uh. kid, sweating profusely, went into both eyes. What the heck? Let's face it. Biggest fight of his life, and he's blind. He can't see. So his eyes, his eyes are bothering him. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't know exactly what happened. They're yelling from Cash's Clay's corner. Something got in his right eye. Ali at 199 pounds was just not a, a full body heavyweight at that point. With Sonny Liston, was probably 220. Oh, the ball. Passes. It's a bit hurt. Sonny Liston put a horrible liquor on him in that round. The lesser guy would have folded, uh. but then his eyes started clear. He started doing a number on Liston again. Uh. Easy target. Uh huh. No uh, cheating, dude, man. Awkwardly fast. Good long left lead. In the sixth round, when Lister went back to his corner, Lister was a. That's crazy that even uh, though he did that, uh -huh. Sonny Lister still ain't knock him out. Nope. Nope. Wow. Beaten man. What do you think is going on in Sonny's mind at this point? Well, I think that they feel now that, that Clay have all the stuff that he needs and go on to beat the defeat of Sonny. Guys, Clay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> peripheral vision. He that. Looking yo. over my shoulder. Looking over my shoulder. <laughs> yeah, ice bag. Oh, we win. <laughs> Sonny oh, he done. Yeah. Quit on the screen. He became heavyweight champion of the world, upsetting Sonny Liston, the seven to one favorite. Electrified, and there he was, right in front of me and a whole bunch of other newspaper men pointing down to us like this. I told you, I told you, I told you exactly what I was gonna do. And no, nobody, even the big uh, sports writers, they, they were in awe over what he had done. Yeah, I'm great. I don't have a mark on the face, yeah. and I upset Sonny Liston, and I just turned 22 years old. I must be the greatest. I'm the king of the world. Hold it, hold it, hold it. You're not that pretty. I'm a man, man. He's not that pretty. <laughs> Had Liston gotten by, the powers that be never would have allowed Cassius Clay to fight again. Who's the greatest? Who's the greatest? Who's the greatest? He was the greatest. Uh, all of the odds were against him. He upset the odds makers. He won. Nothing in Cassius Clay's past prepared him to become Muhammad Ali. Cassius is not my name no more. Officially Muhammad Ali now. Muhammad Ali, right. Muhammad Ali. That's my name. White America won't stand for it, which they did. Black people in many parts of this country weren't allowed to drink from the same uh. water fountains as white people, to eat in the same restaurants. Cassius is in a better position than anyone else to restore a sense of uh, racial pride to not only our people in this country, but all over the world. How do you feel about Malcolm's killing? I feel that it will touch off a war here in New York City between uh, the black Muslims and Malaya Muhammad. The head of the World Boxing Association. He was going to take Muhammad Ali's title away because Muhammad Ali did not think like they wanted him to think. The title does not belong to the title holder. The title belongs to the World Boxing Association. A rematch with Liston was scheduled for November of 1964 in Boston. They fought again. Yeah, uh, yeah they, I think they did fight again, y'all. It's crazy. I know the first fight. I ain't never seen the second fight. I'm slipping. The heavyweight champion of the world, Muhammad Ali. 15 rounds or less. The world heavyweight title. The big fight. The big night. Round number one. Here we go. You'll note that Cassius wants to stay out in the center of the ring where, where he happens to be the king. Muhammad threw, I don't know, maybe four punches at most. Got knocked out by a punch he didn't see. Muhammad was floating around, 
And what happened? He made an angle on the guy, missing it, throwing the jab, his head went down. He didn't see the punch. He got hit right on the temple. Guys, he's got all cut. Mm. <laughs> guy, he cannot move. Cash, I'm not Cash, is you still calling me? I can't get uh, over with Mohammed, you. Mohammed, you're talking in. I'm not a white man. You have to talk in general. So you want to keep calling me a white man's name? I'm not white. I don't want to be called after your name no more. Uh -huh. I'm not no slave. I'm Mohammed Ali. Oh! 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 of Muhammad Ali, what he did in the ring is not what we think about. Because he was doing Gandhi sh outside of the ring, and he could knock out anybody in the world. The guy could hold court in the poorest of the poor right up to the White House. Before you buy a million dollar view like this, create a faceless YouTube automation channel first. In fact, this channel, when he walked in, he lit up the room. I mean, he literally moved faster and lighter on his feet than most welterweights. Uh. Oh! What's yes, up? Bang, bang, bang! Yeah. Woo! Damn, just fast. Yeah. Look at this. But the movement, the side to side, it was like yeah. there was no heavyweights that ever moved like that. No one. <laughs> he just tapped. He killing his dude, yo. Uh, this is Ali, like in 67. He was sleek. He goes, oh. <laughs> hey, man. A couple of guys got this thing about trying to get him steamed up. Uh, calling him Cassius Clay. No. Cassius Clay, yes. Why do you want to say Cassius Clay when Howard yes. Cosell and everybody is calling you Muhammad Ali? Now, why you got to be the one of all people who's color to keep saying Cassius Clay? Why don't you call me my name, man? Right. Well, what's your name? You told me your name was Cassius. Come on, man. <laughs> why are you playing with a who that is? Uh, 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 I think that's Ernie Tunnell. Um... What are you, a sports writer? No, he's a boxer. Oh, okay. no, Howard Cosell is the white man in the middle now. He's the sports guy. He was the sports guy of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Cassius Clay a few I years ago. I never told you my name was Cassius Clay. My name is Muhammad Ali, and you will announce it right there in the center of that ring after the fight if you don't do it now. So, ladies and Uncle gentlemen, Tom? as the two contestants prepare for <laughs> battle right, right now, back off. Uh, who is the one? <laughs> what he was doing? Uh, what's my name? What's my name? You all know exactly who I am. Say my name. And he is screaming at him, what's my name? What's my name? Ah. Play with me, boy. What's my name? What's my name? <laughs> <laughs> he got fuck out of that. Leave me alone. We're going to establish tonight a random selection a sequence. The draft lottery, a live report on tonight's picking of the birth dates for the draft. It was the first lottery used to order men into military service since 1942. As you have just seen, the heavyweight champion of the world has rejected induction into the military service. People say, well, the Vietnam War, hey, everybody was against it. Wrong. 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 Muhammad. He got drafted? Yeah, you got. They could get drafted back then. Like you had no choice but to go. Like if the draft was still today, mm -hmm. when I was like seventeen and eighteen, since I'm the oldest boy, yeah, I would get drafted in the army. I would get a letter sent to my house like you got to report this day that day. No wasn't an option. Uncle Sam wasn't taking no as an option back mm -hmm. then. You're going to fight, right? You know what I'm saying. And Muhammad, you know, he was just so great, and you know, he was so disciplined, and his views was in the right spot. He was like, I'm not going over there to fight this white man's war because the Vietnam War was, um, the true meaning behind it of, you know, of Vietnam, mm. for me and for what I know, America was basically trying to bully them. You know right, what I'm saying? You right, know what I'm saying? Right. And they wasn't going for it. A lot of people died and they, and they still die for some, for, uh, for, for, for some, malice reasons and you know the real button pushes of this country ain't going over there to fight they are gonna send him to fight and him to fight him to fight they're gonna fill your head up with this i don't know 
to me is just nonsense of why you're going over there to fight when they ultimately have a true agenda under it. Under that, you know, mm. they're not gonna tell you what they really got going on and why they really fighting, but you know. Yeah. And Muhammad, you know, he sniffed that out and he was like, Nah, nah I, ain't I ain't with that. So they lock you up if you don't go. 1965, 1966, 95% were in favor of that war. Nobody criticized the U.S. If you were opposed to the war in Vietnam, they thought you were a patriotic and cowardly draft dodgers. More than half of all African Americans opposed the war in Vietnam. Blacks were disproportionately dying in Vietnam. What about your unpatriotic remarks that you made? You said you were the people's champion? Yes, sir. Do you think that you're acting like a people's champion? Yes, sir. So you only have two kind of men, those who compromise and those who take a stand, see? And when you take a stand, you have to be ready to pay for it. No matter what you think, Mr. Muhammad Ali's religion certainly have to admire his courage. Ali had the strength to speak in a time you could be silenced. Dr. Martin Luther King has been shot to death in Memphis, Tennessee. I still have a dream. With Bobby Kennedy gone, Martin Luther King gone, Malcolm X gone, who was that to relate to when Vietnam exploded? Here's why he wasn't losing weight. Being a doctor, I was constantly eating unhealthy. In our face. That was a flashpoint, really. I mean, everything that Ali had done before was as nothing compared with his refusal to be inducted. Suddenly, it didn't seem so craven to be afraid to go into the army and fight this war. There were millions of young men my age eligible for the draft for a war that we didn't believe in. All of us huddled on the conveyor belt feeding the war machine. It took an all-white jury less than a half hour to find Muhammad Ali guilty of all charges. This fellow they call Clay or Muhammad Ali, whatever he wants to call himself, is a disgrace to the nation. While fighting imprisonment for his stand, Ali was also stripped of his title. When the mightiest government in the world come down on you, and yet he didn't compromise. You my enemy. My enemy is a white people, not Vietnam's or Chinese or Japanese. Cassius had receded. And the man who became Muhammad Ali had transcended sport. This nation will rise. Bro, but you got to think about, on top of all of that, we were still fighting racism in this country. Right. <laughs> on top of all of that, right? Right. We were still fighting racism in this country. So you got to... Tip your hat to a guy like that if you're a person of, of, of color and you don't even have to be black. You could be Spanish, you could be Asian, you could be whatever, you know what I'm saying? You got to tip, tip your hat to a person that is willing to pay the cost mm -hmm. and go down for what they truly believed in. Jesus' disciples did it all the time. Yeah, facts. All of them died of capital punishment. What that means is uh, punishment by the government uh -huh. of that day, you know what I'm saying? Because they took a stand for what they believe in. Mm -hmm. They found a, a, a rock and they planted their flag and they will not be moved. At all. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you, you, you got to be commended and feel a sense of, of, of pride. Now, I'm not saying all those guys I just named, they didn't make mistakes and yeah, do stupid stuff. You know, because we all do. Mm -hmm. But you just got to take pride in the things that they did because it was people doing this before them and it's still going to be people doing this after them. them. So, you know, I respect that. Rise up, live out the true meaning of the tree. They were the police, jury, and executioner all in one. You my opposer when I want freedom. You my opposer when I want justice. You my opposer when I want equality. You won't even stand up for me in America for my religious beliefs. Right. And you want me to go somewhere and fight, but you won't even stand up for me here at home. How he wondered whether or not he would ever fight again, and it was his title was stripped from him. How he was a pariah in America. His ban was eventually overturned by the Supreme Court. Ali here today, a victim. The Supreme Court exonerated for refusing military induction. This was Ali's return to the ring after a three and a half year exile. The time he was great. out would have been great. It would have been a, watching a master at work because he had reached his full proportions 
through maturity. The world never got to see the best of Ali. What you got was plenty, but you didn't see the best of them. Uh, 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 uh. Got something for you, boy. I got something for you, boy. The first knockdown of the fight, he took the mandatory eight, and now Ali is behaving like the old Ali. See, he didn't spend those three years lifting weights and running hills and f***ing hitting the heavy bag. He wasn't doing anything. It's over! Ali is the knockout winner! Two undefeated champions. Yes, two sir. champions of the first rank. And Ali coming back to reclaim in many people's minds what was rightly his. But not against some patsy. Against Joe Frazier. Muhammad Ali in the ring. In a beautiful, beautiful red and white robe. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Now here comes Joe Frazier. Joe Frazier will be here any minute. Well, he has two undefeated fighters in there. Frazier has won all 26 of his bouts with 23 knockouts. And Muhammad Ali has won all 31 of his bouts with 25 knockouts. The young Muhammad Ali would have run circles around Joe Frazier. Woo! Look at Ali go. Look at him go. Look at him. I mean, he doesn't look anything like he used to look. I mean, he's, he's bouncing around a little bit in the beginning. The crowd is chanting Ali, and Joe says, come on out and fight. But he's just not the same guy. Well, he didn't have the speed to avoid punches. Uh, uh, uh. What was, what, what, he took a break? Three years. He should have been training them three years, but he didn't do anything. He was out getting some booty, making children, you know, you know, going to the uh, to the mass share the moss. You know mm. what I mean? He was just out. He he should have been training. Right. But he wasn't. So and look how three years do to you. Yeah. You know oh yeah. Oh That's yeah. That's why NOD no days off, yo. Yeah. You grind every day. But he learned he could stand and fight. A wicked punch. Are you trying to get your faceless YouTube channel off the ground and grow it so that you can have some steady income coming in and make? Broke his jaw right there. Joe Frazier. Broke it over. Around is over. What a round. I don't know how he survived that round. Joe just relentlessly keeps going. He has more stamina and power than anybody I think I've ever seen. Don't you watch him? Right there. It's eight rounds. Last round. Back in the day, fights was 15. 15 rounds all the way up until the early, even the late 80s or the early 90s. How many minutes? Huh? How many minutes? I think it was only, it was only like maybe three minutes and 30 seconds. Or three that's or four a minutes. To be fighting, rounds, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah it's a whole lot. I'm at that point Oh! You felt like the world wanted him to stay down, to lose. Many wanted to watch this liberal black draft dodger get his ass kicked he wouldn't give him the comfort of him staying down ali got up simply because he knew that that's what they wanted and to every elder statesman in the black community that i've ever known every one of them remember that story Oh, that was his first the love. The question on everyone's mind was whether Ali could ever be the fighter he once was. And when I do come back, if I ever do, I'll have a more of a hunger of determination, which is something you lose in the intoxication of so-called greatness. Muhammad Ali, I am told, suffered a broken jaw in the first round. Nobody can really believe what they have seen. It is a tired Ali tail, and right? a hurt Ali. Frank Rustich. Seven points, Norton. Five points, Ali. There it is. There it is. One of the greatest upsets of the game in boxing history. He has a broken jaw. He is a beaten man, and he is a broken fighter. And so all of the millions of dollars that loom before him, whether Foreman match or a Frazier rematch, are suddenly gone. What was once a very great fighter becomes now part of fistic history in all probability. George Foreman had annihilated yes, 
everybody. Everyone that stepped what? in with him. I had beaten George Foreman just Muhammad Ali had lost. It's crushed everybody. For the heavyweight title, Big George Foreman. Big George Foreman, that's what they call it. Watch this. So well, that's I Joe Frazier. The toughest Look thing ever invented. Mm. George was a big, strong, George young, like a max truck. pain heavyweight. If he put you, oh, you know, if he put you six feet deep, ultimately, oh, George Foreman didn't have a problem with that. He was that vicious. One punch of mine was was equal to twenty of any other heavyweight. Oh, whatever he hits, he destroys. He not blocking or nothing. I mean, George just throwing them hat, them, <laughs> them haymakers, baby. <laughs> He chasing him. Like getting hit with a whole turkey or something like that. You know what I mean? uh, that was Joe Frazier, right? Yeah, that Yo was out good. there running. You ain't yeah, see him? Yeah, running. Got knocked upside his head. Yo, my bad just he hit the little strap. Yeah, look. Look, he got out of there. Look. I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. <laughs> my bad started running. Frazier. <laughs> I got Joe Frazier, who had dropped Muhammad Ali. The most menacing heavyweight of all time. It would be George Foreman. I was going to be the best heavyweight that ever existed. That he is with Ken Norton, and the reason for that, of course, is that he doesn't like George Foreman one bit. Mm. Do you really believe, Ali, that he yeah, can beat man. this man? Yeah, man. Yeah, the man went 24 rounds with me, broke my jaw in the first round. I was in shape to sack him fight. In those days, he was a bully. The people around him were afraid of him. Foreman had really brutalized the people who trained him, and they were terrified of him. Even the hell he gave me, as fast as I am, as accurate as I am, <laughs> I couldn't whoop Ken Norton. I had beaten the best in Joe Frazier. No doubt about it, I had beaten the best. People had something to say about that. I said, you know what? I'm going to kill one of these fellows. Then they'll shut up. And it looks like Norton has really been... Oh! The guy who destroyed Frazier, destroyed Kenny Norton. Whipped by Kenny Norton, I knocked Kenny Norton out easily. Once again, Muhammad Ali found himself in great demand. The WBC and the WBA mandated the fight, the public certainly wanted it, and the media clamored for it. I think George Foreman will knock Muhammad Ali out and it'll end Muhammad Ali's career. All the boxers were scared, handlers were scared. The only person that didn't appear scared of Foreman was Ali. I'll prove to the world that I'm still the fastest, the prettiest, the most classiest, the most scientific, the greatest fighter of all time. Everybody was scared but Muhammad Ali himself. And Ali is getting the people to expand. Ali, boy, that means Ali kill him. Have you fought many guys who were talkers in the ring? No, I never get a chance to talk much. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of time you get to know a fella, it's all over. As for the fight itself, discussion centered not on who would win, but on how much punishment Foreman would dish out. The time may have come to say goodbye to Muhammad Ali. And now we understand that George Foreman is about to make his way to the ring. Because very honestly, I don't think he can beat George Foreman. Cosell was convinced that Ali was washed up. This guy was the closest thing to a human monster I, I'd ever seen before. He was certainly the scariest boxer. Look at this now as they stare. Muhammad Ali <laughs> beginning to talk to George Foreman. They're really putting a stare on each other. I looked him in the eye to stare him down and said, Oh, George, you were in school. Oh, I was beating Sonny Liston. Gone <laughs> in the past four years beyond two rounds in any fight. Oh, oh you're hot. He knew that the one weakness in, in this monster who was thought of as unbeatable was his stamina. The first round, all of us yelled out, get off the rope. And he would just say, shut up, I know how to do it. Well, I would say that the, the round was very even because that's a, And Ali totally got into the guy's head, and he didn't even realize it. It was... Muhammad Ali's fertile mind that created the rope of those. Here we go, round number two. The determined Ali get off his stool in between rounds. Oh! The woman sat down all the way. Ali, we... You might think you know Snapchat, but do you really? Here's three things that you might not know about Snapchat ads. Did you know...
Yo, bro, is it me? What? Or do boxing back in the day seem a little bit more better than now? Uh, it was more genuine. It was like more like... Whenever a lot of money gets involved, it always takes away from something. Because you got people just fighting for money instead mm. of legacy and stuff like that. Like Floyd is fighting for money. He say he just fighting for money, but he, he want a legacy and all that. Mm. You know, Floyd a narcissist, bro. I done seen so many interviews with Floyd. They'll, they'll be talking about a certain fight and he going to keep bringing it back to himself. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, when I was fighting, oh, this, that, man, ain't nobody asked you that. <laughs> Starting the second or third round, when he went to the ropes, he was calling woman all kinds of names. Any name of otherness you can think of. Oh! Talk. Definitely serious. Tremendous combination. He fought just like a, your initial bump, just lay on the rope and take a whip it. This time, he did it with character. He said, hey, I'm going to weather this storm. The rope of dope uh, was something that was invented by Muhammad Ali that night. I must say, I don't understand those tactics, Joe, of staying on the ropes and letting him hit It just shows you the power of intellect and intelligence and how that can compete against anything. And believe me, I was a big, powerful giant in the ring with Muhammad. I mean, a knockout on him. He stood up to me. Mm. Setting him up against the rope. What a... So young, so strong. Not supposed to do it, leaning up against the ropes. Four punches downstairs on Ali. So fearless. I had him beat. I really did. And really thought I had him beat up in the body, had him tired. Continues to talk. Continues. Against Tony oh. Foreman, he does away with his opponents, one after another, in less than three rounds. George not going that type of distance a long time. He was treading in water, you know, never been in before. Mm. This is the furthest that George mm. Foreman has gone in a fight since 1972. Misses the right hand. Ali is definitely confusing it. Missing the shots that he missed, it drained him. Look at Foreman's face. He does look tired. Nobody knew the strength of Muhammad Ali. He was manhandling just like Archie said, grabbing him in the empty. As if he go longer, Muhammad going to kill him. The guy's tank. I was afraid he was going to get killed by a George Foreman that many of our young viewers don't know. Oh! Showtime, Muhammad. It's showtime. Ooh, ooh! <laughs> <laughs> I love his strategy, bro. <laughs> Come on. Come back out here. <laughs> I thought he was hurt. I thought his body was hurt. He came back. He hit one with everything. And he winked at me. Oh, yes, there's no doubt about it. He winked right over here to this corner. You know, the guy really was the people's choice. And he was the people's choice because he loved them. I'd hate to predict it any fight, but my goodness, those people who said Foreman would win in a flash have certainly been proved wrong. And about the seventh round, he asked me, that all you got, George? <laughs> that was like a nightmare. After a while, <laughs> the dumbest of us looked up there and said, you know what? He's winning. Oh. Oh, he about to kill him, monkey. Yeah. Back at it. I am the greatest. Eight, the referee stops the fight. It'll be he, he loved people, uh, and he loved the adulation of the crowd. Joe Frazier will fall. All of us thought it was going to be a nice, easy fight. Come on, gorilla. We in Manila. <laughs> Where Ali comes out, dances around, the heat, the thump, but then but I'm and knocks him out in seven eight. A lot of people thought Joe Frazier was washed up. Joe no, we got something for you. You hell, you better believe it. He was once described as the world's most famous man 
and indeed it's difficult to think of even a contender. Why are they counting uh, Joe Frazier out, yo? Like, what, what uh, he was doing? Muhammad just talked a lot, bro. No, I'm talking about, like, what? So after Muhammad Ali regained the belt, mm. where did Joe Frazier path go? Uh, after Muhammad Ali regained the belt, Joe fought a couple contenders. He beat him. But was he still as powerful as when he fought Muhammad? Uh, it, it was a few years after that. I don't think so. For he real? He was still really good. Though. Okay. So they both kind of like yeah. on the same level, for real. This is his greatest I adversary, you, right? Here. As you know, there's been a lot of speculation about your condition. There was a suggestion, for instance, that there was brain damage. <laughs> First time before. Yeah. I mean, you know yourself. I've been hit a couple of times, but I've never been knocked out. I've never been stopped. Uh -oh. I've never got hurt. It's strange, strange. Oh, you must have got hurt in the ring. Yeah. Well, I mean, I saw you Joe, fight Joe Frazier. He was the greatest because he was a fighter in every season. Of the world. Muhammad Ali was not worshipped. He was actually vilified. He was a rebel with a cold cold. His Parkinsonism was due to repeating blows in his head. Repeating mm. blows in his head. And you've seen what can happen to fighters. You've seen those shambling wrecks that go around. You see them at every boxing occasion. And what people are frightened of is they don't want that to happen to you. Uh, had an awful lot of oh. trouble coping with Ali's fast hands. Several times he landed very hard punches on Ali, and I thought Ali was gone. Oh, now double hooking with that left hand. Oh, hold on, bro. This is the second fight. Why you say this the first one? I never said this was the first one. You did. No, oh, I didn't, did I? You drunk, yeah. Oh. But, um, so he, I mean, Ali always had a game plan. I think more so like he was, was more on the fly with me. Yeah, you know? now I'm saying, huh? No, in the beginning stage he was more right, on the fly. Right, right. But now it just seemed like powerful fighters. Mm. He going he can take punches. Mm. He gonna let them throw them things though. Mm. And then after that he just gonna curl you up, yo. <laughs> I like that. It's like he getting smarter as time go, bro. Round ten, schedule for fifteen. Hey, two of the greats. Okay, going at it, nearly killed each other. Hey. Between rounds, before the tenth, I heard Ali say something to you that I never heard him say before. What was that? Man, he said, "This is the closest I've ever been to dying, really." <laughs> and I said, "Well, now we got to separate the men from the boys." Right. right. He had in the ring Ooh. to take life-threatening punishment as we saw him take. Oh, those were horrendous fights. Those are horrendous That's fights. That's right. And then I want to retire. This is too painful. It's too much work. Okay. Might have a heart attack or something. Right. I want to get up and while I'm on top. There's no explaining why a guy comes back. I don't know why he's there. Why? What do you beat for everybody? Whoop. Did he beat Joe Frazier? Uh, the second time? Brother Manila, I, I think he did. I, I'm probably. They, they ain't show it. Yeah. They knew. They all said. It's tough, tough. Take away the glamour, the allure, the lights. I would think that Muhammad Ali will have won back the heavyweight championship for the third time. Oh, he won it back, so he beat him the second time. With Muhammad Ali, retirement was a dirty word. Muhammad Ali, now in the ring, awaiting the arrival of Larry Holmes. And he was really suffering from Parkinson's. Right. Right. He was, was already, really? Yeah, I was it already kicked in. in. Evidence of some speech problems. Right. Right. These young dudes. It was a fight. Oh, so you're like getting fat. Teeing off on him. Ali gets to his feet ever so slow for the 10th round. He was a shell of himself as a box at that particular moment in time, and it actually broke Larry Holmes' heart. Yeah, it was like, it's like hitting a slow moving heavy bang. Game's over. I'm on the cheap second. All right. I stopped the fight. All right. The Muhammad Ali story is, is a triumphant story because he did triumph and he did change his own life and he changed the lives of so many other people. He was kind of a skinny like kid. Uh, the first fight I put him in, he weighed 89 pounds. 
Heavyweights Jimmy Jones and Cassius Clay square. Impossible is just a big word thrown around by small men. Ooh. How many? Five in a row. Left and right too fast. Who find it easier to live in the world they've been given than to explore the world they have to change. He was somebody that had principles. He stood for something. Oh! The world lost a true icon, Muhammad Ali. You're being extremely truculent. Whatever truculent means, if that's good, I'm there. Ali forced us to take a look at ourselves. Oh, another right hand! This brash young man who thrilled us, angered us, confused, and challenged us, ultimately became a silent messenger of peace. Round five, the champion Ali says, I'm putting you away now. Get ready, you're going down. He was one of the most influential people of the 20th century and one of the most dominant athletes in the history of sports. I'm the greatest of all time. Well, Cassius, how do you rate yourself as a fighter? I wouldn't want to do too much bragging about it, but everybody that watches me fight or everybody that has witnessed one of my bouts, they say that I am the greatest that they've ever seen. And he whispered in my ear, little brother, you made my life better than it was. I am the greatest. But didn't he make all of our lives a little bit better than they were? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Greatest fighter, yeah? Uh, not for me, bro. Who the greatest great? fighter for me is Marvin Hagel. That's oh, my okay. favorite. Mm. This was a... Uh, this documentary right here was more so historical, bro. <laughs> like, I was, uh, it's like I learned so much other stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I just didn't even, I just, we just learned so much, bro, about, I learned so much about back then, what mm -hmm. was going on. And for Muhammad Ali, bro, to go against all that, it just wasn't, wasn't about boxing, bro. Mm -hmm. It was way more deeper, bro. Oh, yeah. He was fighting the world, bro. Yeah. And for him to be killing like that. <laughs> That's a lot on your back, bro. But you know, it just it had to be done. Somebody had to take a stand against the government at that time because this country was just off the hook around the sixties, seventies, and stuff like that, bro. It was crooked. It's still crooked now, but it was right. just crazy crooked back then. It was just like wow for real. Mm -hmm. uh, this was an amazing video by Joseph Vincent Mine. This was probably one of the best ones that we've seen. Joey V. You feel me? If y'all new to the channel. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, man. Yes, Please sir. comment the next, or I'll put up a poll the next documentary y'all want us to react to. Mm. Anything else you got to say before we get out of here? Let's go. I'm Nick Dunson. And I'm Mookie Dunson. And we out, baby. One.